It's a beautiful day. It's almost a solstice. It can mean only one thing. Gotta eat some beans. While I am a fan of the protein rich musical fruit, what I really wanted was the can um, to make one of these, which is a pinhole camera. Um, it's a six month exposure. Uh, it's called a sonograph, um, and what you get at the end of it uh, is one of these pictures. Um, this is basically the sun moving across the sky every day, and then it, as the earth tilts on its axis, as the seasons change, um, obviously the sun burns in a higher or lower place, depending on which sources you put it up on. Um, and you get a little bit of detail in the foreground. Uh, this one was up a tree, so you can see some tree branches. Um, yeah, a really nice, really effective way of showing that the earth tilts on its axis, if nothing else. Um, they make really beautiful images. So I'm going to show you how to make one, uh, and then we'll take one down that I put up six months ago, and I'll show you how to develop it. It's really easy, you do it at home, won't cost very much money. Here we go. To make your sonograph, you'll need a tin can, a roll of aluminium tape, a needle, try and find the smallest needle you can. One of these um, can lids that you can get from a pet shop or your supermarket. Um, a drinks can, black and white photographic paper, and that's not the kind that you print stuff out on, that is the photosensitive black and white paper. Um, some wet and dry sandpaper, uh, a micrometer is really, really handy pair of scissors and then a load of stuff to put holes in other stuff. Um, you'll be able to see the way I do it but um, if you'd rather use a drill or you've got some other piece of equipment to put a hole in a can by all means. First thing we need to do is to measure the inside diameter of our can. That gives you the focal length um, and from that we can work out how big our pinhole needs to be. So my can is about 72 millimeters. There's loads of websites out there where you can plug in your focal length and it will tell you the diameter of your pinhole. Um, but if you're interested, the diameter is equal to C times the square root of your focal length times the wavelength of light. Um, C in this case is the Lord Rayleigh value, which is 1.9. The focal length we know is 72 millimeters. We just measured it. And lambda uh, is about 550 nanometers which in this case putting it in millimeters is 550 times 10 to the minus 6 millimeters units working this out then diameter equals 1.9 times the root of 72 times 550 times 10 to the minus 6 which equals a number. How do I find a calculator on this thing? 1.9 times the square root of 0 0.0396 which equals 1.9 times Zero point about zero point two which equals zero point three eight millimeters tiny. Okay, so we need to measure our needle. Um, you can get micro drills that are kind of this diameter. Um, but for me, I'm just going to eyeball it against the, the needle. So it's about halfway up the point, um, which is about 0.4 of a mil. So I'm just going to try and put half of the 
point of the needle through my can, which is the next bit. Take your can and cut a little bit out. Do be careful, uh, it is sharp. Get your wet and dry. You can just round off the edges so you don't cut yourself. Cool, it's gonna be our aperture. Next I'm going to just put the needle against it. I'm just going to take the hammer, just tap it in, and that's about halfway up the point of the needle, and that's about right. Um, aperture has to be totally round, so on the opposite side, just take it back onto your wet and dry, give it a little rub, and blow it out, and hold it up to the light you should be able to see a tiny little hole and there's our aperture now we just need to put a hole in the can different ways to do this you can use a drill the way i like to do it because um, it's quite quick uh, i've got this old chair leg or table leg or whatever it is um, just put the can inside it and then mark halfway up so About there. I've just got an old screwdriver. Put it on the can. There we go. Now I found it works better if you put your aperture on the inside of the can. So um, I've got this file, I'm just going to file down the rough edges. Next take your aperture and some aluminium tape. What you want to do is tape the edges of the aperture. Make sure you don't go over the hole. And then we can put this straight into the can on the inside. Just look through the hole, make sure you can see your pinhole. Make sure it's really well stuck down inside the can. Um, I don't want any water getting in down the side, so what I'm going to do is just take some really small bits of aluminium tape just tape up the edges, push them down onto the aperture, next thing you want to do is make a cover for it, so as you just get a little scrap bit of paper aluminium tape put it on the underside and that's just so your tape doesn't stick to your aperture and you can just peel it away once it's in place grab your can lid and cover it in aluminium tape on the inside and that just stop any light leaking Doesn't matter about the excess. It's almost finished. 
we're ready to load it with film. Loading your film needs to be done in total darkness unless you're lucky enough to have access to a dark room. Um, I'm really fortunate because I can use the dark room at work but if you don't have one you can do it at home in a really dark room at night um, you can do it underneath in the bed sheets um, you could double up a couple of plastic bags and put your hands in it but basically once your photographic paper is exposed to light it's going to ruin your image you only get one chance at it and you're going to have to wait six months to find out whether you screwed it up or not so don't take the risk don't expose it to light um, and basically all you need to do is to crop your photographic paper um, so it fits in your can Make sure your paper goes all the way around uh, except for where the aperture is. Obviously you don't want to cover that up again. Once that's in, put the lid on. More aluminium tape around the top. And that will stop any light leaks. As well as the elements getting in. This one solograph ready to go. So how does it work? Well it exploits a quality of photographic paper and that is um, it discolors when it's exposed to light. Um, and what the pinhole does is project an image literally onto the photographic paper. So it literally is burning into the paper over a six month period. Um, and what you end up with is some uh, sheet of orangey paper that has been discoloured at different rates and that's your image. Top tips for placing your solograph. It needs to face the sun, so if you're in the northern hemisphere it needs to face south. If you're in the southern hemisphere it needs to face north. And if you're, if you're at the equator, up. Put them somewhere out of reach. If you can camouflage them, all the better, uh, so people don't mess with them. Put lots of them up. You will get some that screw up, whether you've made the camera right or not. You'll get light leaks, uh, water getting in. Make sure they're really secure in place before you leave them so they can't move. Don't forget to remove the shutter. That's enough of that, let's go get one. So I'm at the Old Waterworks in Southend. Uh, I work here. Um, this is the only place I put a solograph uh, in the winter solstice about six months ago. So we're going to go take it down and I'll show you how to develop it. So before you grab your solograph you need to get a little bit of aluminium tape to cover the shutter. Make sure no more light gets in. Okay, you need to do this as quick as you can, so get everything ready, get your scanner open, software open, and then you can go ahead and open your solograph. Okay, scan my solograph, looks pretty good. Gonna take a look at the photo. <laughs> it's gonna be nice. Let's do some editing. Once you scanned your image, uh, import it into whatever photo editing software you're using. Straighten it up and crop it. The photo you pull out of the can is a negative, which means it's back to front and the colors are inverted. So first thing you need to do is invert the colours. You'll end up with something with a blue hue and that's because of the orange tinge of the photographic paper once it's exposed. Flip your image horizontally and there's your photograph. You need to do a little bit more editing to it. They usually come out a little bit dark 
So there's no set formula for developing a solo graph, but I'll give you some general techniques that I use. First I'll try and bring out some detail in the foreground. Usually start by cranking up the contrast and then changing the brightness. Don't want to make it too bright because you'll lose definition in the sun streaks. Um, it's a bit of a balancing act. Once you're happy, um, you can fiddle around with the colour settings. Um, I like to turn up the reds because it gives it a really interesting contrast with the natural blue of the picture. Sun streaks will pick up the colour changes better than the foreground, so bear that in mind. Go back and change the contrast and brightness again until you get something you're happy with. There you go then. That's a six month photograph of the sun and a car park.